Welcome to another lecture session of this video lecture series in Applied Physics UPA004 course. And in this series, we are talking about thin film interference. And today we will talk about Newton strings and some of its applications. So the Newton ring is basically an application by itself of the thin film interference, where the thin film that is involved is a wedge shaped thin film. And we have already discussed the interference in case of a wedge shaped thin film in the last lecture. So today we'll talk about how the Newton's rings forms. Then we'll try to derive a expression for the diameter of the Newton's rings. Then we'll check how the Newton's rings can be used for measurement of wavelength of monochromatic lights and the refractive index of liquid mediums. So here is an example of such Newton's ring and here is a schematic diagram of the phenomena of Newton ring where you have a light source, a monochromatic light source and then this is the actual setup for the Newton string and this is a glass plate this is a traveling microscope so here is a actual snapshot of a Newton string setup so this is the sodium lamp from here the light goes into this setup and this plano convex lens setup is right here this is this glass plate if I could enlarge it probably it would be better so here is a bigger version of this same photograph where this is the sodium lamp and this switch is to power on the sodium lamp then the sodium lamp the yellow light is forwarded to this setup here this is the glass plate and down here is a plano convex lens setup and here is the traveling microscope where during the experiment you look from this side and then the interference is happening here so the neutron rings are formed here and you look at through this microscope and you see nice interference patterns now to understand the formation of neutron strings we have to first understand what is this plano convex lens and where does this thin film or wedge shaped thin film forms now to understand the plano convex lens setup now a plano convex lens setup is like this so there is a plano convex lens and then there is a glass plate plain glass plate is there at the bottom of this this plano convex lens then what happens is this radius of curvature of this plano convex lens this curvature of this surface let's say this is the center and so this is the radius of curvature this radius of curvature is taken to be very very large so that this curve who actually in a real experiment would be very very flat and more or less same to a plane surface so when that happens then this thickness here becomes very very small so thickness is the largest on the edge of this plano convex surface and zero at the center where it is touching the lower glass plate so that's how a wedge shaped thin film is formed now to understand this let us look at how this plano convex lens is formed so basically to form a plano convex lens what you do is you take a big huge glass sphere and then you take a part cut it out so this part becomes your and a convex lens right so if you look at from the top from this side what you would see is this is like a circular lens with some radius so this radius is this distance and radius of curvature of this surface here is the radius of this original convex surface is the radius of the original sphere from where this part was taken out so here this this point is the point where the plano convex lens touches this surface bottom glass plate plane surface now as you move away from this point so that means as you are moving away from this point in different directions so here is a region then at this different distances from this origin the thickness is the same on all these circular points for example let's say this point here is this point 
let's say this circle is called a so this is a then this point here is this point so this point is called b and this point here is called c now all these points along different directions on these different circles are equivalent so if you take these points then they are all equivalent why i am saying talking about this because it will come at a later stage that you have to remember the thickness of this wedge shaped thin film here at let's say a is same all around this circle then the thickness at the point b which is a little larger than what was at the point a is also same around this circle then thickness at c which is again a little larger than point c is again same for all these circles all these points on this circle so here let's say this is the point a this is the point b this is the point c so then the thickness on the left hand side at this different points a b c would be same as the thickness at these points a b c on the right hand side and in all directions similarly now so that's point number one you have to remember that throughout this plano convex lens there are these concentric circles where the thickness of the wedge is same and this thickness increases as you go away from this touching point either this point or this point towards the edge of this plano convex lens so now how the interference is happening now to look at so there is this plano convex lens sitting over a normal plane glass plate this is the only point where it is touching now a light falls onto this surface this is our incident light then it's get refracted comes to this point then again one part of it gets refracted and then it gets reflected from the bottom surface and then it enters the lens again and then goes out like this so let's say these points are a b c then from this surface there will be another ray which is getting reflected back let's say this ray is this so this is our incident ray let's say one two three so these two rays two and three when looked from this side you would see they would interfere and produce interference phenomena on this surface so likewise there are lots of parallel rays coming in and they are all meeting at different points on this plano convex on this surface and they would interfere and produce interference either they would interfere constructively or destructively along this surface and when you looked at from the top from here when you look at from this side then you would see that there are places where bright fringes are formed there are places where dark fringes are formed so now to understand where dark fringe would form and where bright fringes are to be formed then we have to look at this ray 2 and ray 3 which are actually the interference rays so we have to find out what is the optical path difference between ray 2 and 3. In the last lecture for a wedge shaped thin film we have evaluated this condition. Let's say at this point D the thickness is D then the optical path difference is 2 mu D cos R plus theta where this r is related to the refraction angle which is happening here and this refraction angle can be calculated from this incident ray the incident angle then this theta is this wedge angle and as we explained earlier if this radius of curvature of this surface if this r is taken to be very very large then this wedge angle will be again very very small you have to remember this because we will come back to this point again a little later now this is the optical path difference if you remember in the last lecture there is another path difference which is lambda by 2 and that lambda by 2 is because the ray 3 here is getting reflected from a denser medium coming from a rarer medium assuming that this is some rarer medium like air so this wedge is filled with air only and this is let's say glass so when a light reflects from a denser medium then there is a phase difference of pi is introduced between 
the incident ray and the reflected ray here. Now that pi phase difference between 2 and 3 translates into a phase path difference of lambda by 2. So this is the path difference, total path difference between ray 2 and 3. Now for this 2 and 3 to interfere constructively, you would have the maximum condition to be 2 mu t cos r plus theta plus lambda by 2 is equal to constructively so n lambda and for destructive interference so that they form a minimum you will get 2 mu t cos r plus theta this path difference lambda by 2 this total path difference is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. We have already talked about this in another lecture for the wedge shape thin film. Now let us simplify the things a little bit. Simplification, what are the simplification? That if the light that is incident is normal for normal incidence r is equal to 0. Incident angle for normal incident, incident angle is 0 so reflection angle will also be 0. Then for a very thin wedge theta would be very very small when would that happen so this basically r is large so in that case let's say what would be the minimum condition that would be 2 mu d so r is 0 theta is very very small so both of them could be very close to 0 so cos very close to 0 is 1 so you get lambda by 2, 2 mu d, lambda by 2 is equal to 2n plus 1, lambda by 2. And this implies for destructive interference, you have 2 mu d is equal to n lambda. Similarly, for maximum condition, this is the minimum condition or dark fringe. This is maximum condition or bright fringe. From there, you get 2 mu d. So cos r theta plus one, cos r plus theta is again 1 plus lambda by 2 is equal to n lambda. This would imply 2 mu d is equal to 2n minus 1 lambda by 2. So these are the two conditions for bright and dark fringes. Now also for our convenience, let's give this to these d's some name. Let's say dn. What is dn? d suffix n. What is dn? dn is like for the planar convex lens, if here is the point where the interference is happening, then this thickness is dn. So that's like the nth bright or dark fringe. And at that point, this thickness is dn. Now, next, you would calculate this dn in terms of the radius of curvature of the planar convex lens. Next, we will calculate this dn in terms of the radius of curvature of the planar convex lens. So let's say our planar convex lens is this. So this is the part we took out of the glass sphere and formed our planar convex lens. And uh, this is the center. And let's say our glass plate is, let's say our glass plate is here. So the glass plate is A, B, C. And then at some point here, this point where the ray 2 and 3 are interfering, then this distance is our dn or d. Now let us form some convenient diagrams and uh, now let us form some geometric diagrams. Let's say this point is p, q and this is this point here is n. Now this is the radius of curvature of this convex surface or the radius curvature of the sphere. Now from the properties of the sphere we can write QB into QD is equal to PQ into QN. So what is QB? QB is D. QD is 2 into R minus D. PQ is R into R. So from here we get R square is equal to 2dr minus d square which is very close to 2dr. So r square 2dr. Here what we did we very small because we are saying that this radius of curvature capital R is very very large so that this wedge that is forming here is very very narrow. So this thickness dn is actually very very small. So when you have a very small 
thickness and if you take a square of it and it becomes much smaller so we ignore this d square compared to this term where r is very very large uh -huh. so this is capital r so that's r square now again for this point n to be dark means at this point n there's a destructive interference the condition was 2 mu d n is equal to n lambda so here this value of this d we put it here you get 2 mu r square by 2r is equal to n lambda that implies r square is equal to n lambda r divided by mu so this is the radius of the nth dark fringe so that radius is distance from this point b which is the point where it is touching the lower surface similarly if, if this point n to be bright then from the above condition earlier we have 2 mu dn is equal to n minus 1 lambda by 2 so from here you get rn square is equal to 2n minus 1 r lambda by 2 mu so this is the radius of the bright ring this is the radius of the dark ring so one thing may not be at this moment still not clear why we are saying that this is the radius of a dark ring i already have explained a little while ago that if you look at from this side from the top what you see th this planar convex setup is a circle here like a circle here so this is the touching point and all these points on this circle has the same radius so same thickness all these point on this second circle has the same radius so the same thickness so if a bright interference is happening here constructive interference at the point b then all the points on this ring will be bright constructive interference because they have the same radius same thickness condition is same similarly if this point c is where a dark fringe is appearing then all the points along this circle will be again dark so that's why this Newton's interference pattern are in the form of concentric rings and at the center that's the smallest ring and then as you go away from the center center here means where the planar convex lens touches the lower surface as you go away from the center the radius increases and for different radiuses they would be either bright or dark bright or dark and so forth following this two conditions that we just derived so these two conditions would give you at what radius or which circles would be bright or which circles would be dark now generally in newton's ring experiment we don't talk about the radius we talk about the diameter so correspondingly the diameter can be calculated by saying that the diameter is just double of that so if these are the rings then for a ring na3 let's say this is n and a ring the diameter dn nothing but is equal to 2 of rn and you place this into these two conditions so now with this expression for the diameter the dark ring diameter would be dn square for n lambda r by mu and from here for the bright rings the diameter would be 2n minus 1 to r lambda divided by mu so these are the important results for the newton strings now this newton string has very very important applications the first application is the measurement of wavelength of light and that is a monochromatic light and that let's say this wavelength is lambda how to measure this so with this newton string setup we measure the diameter of different rings so let's say the diameter of nth dark ring is given by similarly diameter diameter of n plus pth ring and that is a dark ring would be d n plus p is equal to 4 n plus p lambda r by p and then where p is just some integer so it's like if this is the diameter of the 10th ring this would be diameter of the 12th ring in that case the p would be 2 so then you take the difference of these two the difference of these two diameters would be is equal to 4 p lambda r by b and then you can use this expression to calculate the lambda lambda is d n plus p square minus d n square divided by 4 p r then 
एप्लीकेशन नंबर टू मेजरमेंट ऑफ रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ ए फ्लूड म्यू सो टू मेजर द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ ए फ्लूड व्हाट यू डू इज यू डू इट इन टू सेपरेट स्टेप्स स्टेप ए डू द एक्सपेरिमेंट विद एयर इन द एयर वेज so it's like if this is the wedge so this is the piano convex surface so you do in one case with air and then you measure this dn plus p square minus dn square is equal to 4 pr lambda just from the last expression so you calculate all these dn so it's like you calculate the difference between d10 square minus d8 square then you calculate d12 square minus d10 square and so forth like several values with p is equal to in this case is equal to 2 so you do this a few measurements and keep a note of that so that measurement would be is equal to 4 pr lambda then you do that you replace this air with a liquid let's say you want to find out the refractive index of the water then you replace this air with water you put some water you you put a droplet of water on this uh, lower surface and then place the plano convex lens on the water so now the wedge would be now filled with water and in that case you will have dn plus p again you measure this diameters with the water itself so let's say these diameters are now a little changed of course that would change and that would be 4 pr by lambda divided by mu so here we have neglected this mu because for air this mu is equal to 1 now if you take the ratios of these two take the ratios then you get mu is equal to dn p square minus dn square dn prime square minus dn prime square right so this is the expression that you use for measuring the refractive index so again in short for measurement of wavelength of a monochromatic light with a given monochromatic light for which you want to find out the wavelength you do the newton string experiment and then you find out this different diameters of the rings so you, let's say you recorded diameter of the 10th ring 11th ring 12th ring 13th ring 14th ring and so forth and then you use the differences of the rings diameter squares and equate with this number and from there you get the value of the lambda here of course if we use the air as the medium then mu is equal to 1 if you use some other medium then you correspondingly use that refractive index here with the assumption that you know the refractive index of this medium that you are using otherwise you can just use air so there is nothing between the two glass convex glass surface and the plane glass surface so it's just simply air in that case mu is equal to you can replace that to be is equal to 1 then for the measurement of the refractive index of a medium we do the experiment in two steps first with the air you calculate this difference of the squares of the diameters of the different rings and then you place the medium for which you want to calculate the refractive index and then you calculate the same diameters differences and take the ratios you calculate the refractive index so with this we finish our this lecture session so in this session to summarize what we did we first tried to understand how the newton strings are formed then we calculated the diameter of the newton string and then we calculated the expression for the wavelength and the refractive index that you can use for newton string experiments thank you very much